Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new educational video here at Market Wisdom. So glad you joined us this afternoon for uh, another great educational video uh, as we continue to bring you all the educational content we possibly can. A lot of people ask about uh, margin accounts. Should I be setting up a margin account? Should I be trading on margin uh, without really understanding what it is exactly they're getting themselves into? So I've had a lot of requests for this one. Uh, let's discuss margin accounts. We'll bring in Neil and Sean here, guys, and we'll uh, get going on margin accounts and give them uh, all the uh, kind of little tidbits and information they need to know before both setting up a margin account and more importantly, what are we doing when we're trading on margin? Exactly. And look, uh, if you're asking the question, it means you have a brokerage account with a cash account. Uh, if you don't, then I don't think you should be asking this question. That's not the way to start out uh, in the margin account. So you know, a cash account is very, very simple. Uh, you put $10,000 in. Uh, you can buy $10,000 worth of stock, maybe buy a couple of, uh, a couple of companies, 5,000 one, 5,000 the other to diversify. Uh, from there, unless you sell uh, some, of your, some of your portfolio, you're not able to purchase anything else because that's all you've got going for you. Now, there's a little bit more to it uh, uh, when it comes to, it comes to margin uh, because what it involves is, is getting a loan based on the value of your portfolio. And I call it 50%, but every brokerage will be uh, sometimes a little bit different. This allows you to own more in terms of the value, uh, in terms of the value, cash value of uh, the positions that you hold. You're able to go in excess of that, but there are other reasons why you want to have a margin account. Um, you'll see us often short sell on the show. We're day traders. It's a bit of a different story there. Uh, but if you want to short sell, that uh, means borrowing uh, shares of a company and betting that the price is going to go down. I think the market is going to crash. Uh, you know, like I just happened to look at a, a Novavax. I have it up here. Oh, my God, it's going to go uh, break through 105 uh, any second at 106. This is an actionable event. I want to short it. Uh, you need a margin account to do that. Uh, also, in, the, in order to play options, you're probably going to have to have a marginal account. Uh, so always make sure you understand the rules for your broker. Uh, the first thing, of course, is uh, you've got to have a cash account first. You should have traded in it already uh, and have an understanding of market fundamentals uh, before you go on to margin. Because as we're going to go into some examples on how a margin account works mathematically, uh, you'll start to understand uh, uh, that it can get costly if you don't understand what you're doing. Uh, and a lot of people have blown up their accounts because of a lack of understanding uh, as to what a margin call is going to be and the implications of such, Sean. Yeah, margin, I mean, it's so, so simple. It, it, it's just basically you're borrowing money to put into the market and you pay an interest or you pay some sort of a fee to the broker to borrow said stock. So if you deposit into your account $25,000 and you want to buy, um, we, I have an example here of CGC. We, we can do that right now. Uh, let's just talk about this right here. So you want to buy some CGC here, uh, and I'm going to use $25. Uh, it doesn't matter wherever we want to use it. Let's just say right here. Uh, so you buy, you think it's breaking out. Uh, you deposit your twenty five grand into any kind of a marginable trading account, and then you say, you know what? I'm gonna. I really like the long here, so I have twenty five thousand dollars. It's twenty five dollars a stock, so I can buy. 20, I could buy a thousand shares, right? That's going to get me to the twenty-five thousand. The thing is, the broker will also lend you, like Neil just said. And again, this is depending on the broker, but we're going to use one hundred percent in this example. The broker will lend you that other twenty-five thousand. So now you can buy two thousand shares of said company CGC. So when CGC rips up here from twenty-five uh, to fifty dollars, you've made double the amount of money because all you have to do is so you're long fifty thousand dollars worth. It goes up to $50, and you've made, you've doubled, so you've made that $50,000, and then you simply pay back the broker, and you're, you're good to go. No problem. Where margin gets spicy is when the stock does not go your way. So all of a sudden, you're long here 2,000 shares, and you're going to lose if it goes down. So let's take this. It actually gets chopped in half from this level. So what's going to happen is the minute your position is equal to what you owe the borrow broker, you're going to get a margin call. So if you have 2,000 shares here at $25 and the thing drops to half of that, $1,250, you now only own $25,000 worth of the stock. So guess what happens? Boom, you're going to get liquidated, right? And so 
That's easy. You're going to get a margin call. It's going to be you say, hey, Sean, you owe us 25 grand. Your position's only worth 25 grand. You have X amount of time to put in more money. If you don't do that, you get liquidated. And all of a sudden, man, this 25,000 that you put in up here, the stock goes down to 1250. You're only supposed to be down half of what you've put in. But because you doubled up on the margin, you are now liquidated and completely wiped out of everything. And look, if you're a trader and you've been around long enough, then this has probably happened to you, hopefully on a smaller amount. But yeah, that's the risk in margin accounts being wrong. It, go, it goes both ways, though, Sean. I think it's, it's sort of worth noting here that if the stock goes up, yeah, uh, you right, your so profits. what'll happen is, and I have a crappy example. I just just put up my screen, guys. It's just I uh, quickly threw this together. Uh, uh, look, it, let's say you fifty uh, percent margin, five thousand cash in your account, so you buy ten thousand dollars worth of stock, right? So uh, your loan is for half that. Uh, if the stock goes up ten percent, right, you now have uh, eleven thousand dollars worth of value. Uh, at that point, you're eligible for for six grand in margin. You have one thousand in excess. Uh, that you can put into something else at that point. Now, this is not to say that that's what you're going to want to do. Um, I'm going to go back just because I happen to have an example that I, that I like up here. If you're trading a highly volatile name, and uh, this is literally one month of uh, Novavax, it's gone 50% uh, to the upside and then retrace over $82, uh, over a 50% move up, and then another retracement down, which is like 20%. Very, very volatile name. It's not to say that, oh my gosh, I have an extra margin. Let's roll it into something super volatile. Uh, people that do this successfully will usually uh, use that extra amount uh, for, for safer type of investments, or it, it could be uh, you want to you wanna buy back into like, like an Apple or a blue chipper. We just talked about blue chippers. Uh, so be very careful about throwing away, uh, throwing into uh, some, extra, so, so, uh, some extra risk when you do find yourself in an excess position. Um, it could just be hey, you bought something, it went up the next day. Uh, you know, just to make sure uh, that you're not just using that euphoria, like, oh my gosh, I hit one for one, let's immediately gamble it into the next, uh, the next stock. It's usually a dangerous way to go, but it is worth pointing out that you get that flexibility when your account does move to the upside uh, and you, uh, you are on margin. So, you know, it's not to say that I'm encouraging uh, everyone to run, run, run out and do that if they find them in excess. Uh, but certainly it's good to know you have that available to you. Uh, real quick, guys, just to wrap things up here, when it comes to margin accounts, let's let's maybe touch on a little bit uh, when it is possibly a good idea to, uh, you know, stick your toe in. Neil, you just mentioned, uh, you know, once your account starts to move in the right direction, yes, kind of, you know, adding more buying power, adding more ability to uh, put on more risk is definitely a great idea. Having a trade plan, A, that is very, very sound and has shown positive results uh, is going to be so key here. But uh, just real quick to end things off here, guys, when, like, when do we want to start adding uh, more buying power through margin? For me, the answer is never. Uh, I know that's not what, what you want, but I don't think a trader should ever uh, really do anything on margin. Uh, you know, unless, I mean, I'm going to, a huge example, like uh, you started with 25 grand, now your account's at $100,000, and you just, you want to maybe go a little bit on, on some kind of a margin, but I would never, ever use uh, margin. To me, that it doesn't really make any sense because your, your, your next trade could be your last one, right? And so if you're willing to lose everything, Go ahead, man. Uh, put, put it on margin. But um, if you are going to do it, I would suggest, yes, like we talked about before, blue chip stock, something that's pretty uh, consistent and steady. That's how I would use margin. Uh, if you're looking for the home runs, man, I mean, there's stocks every day that you could do that on. Um, and I just hate for somebody to use margin on some of these high flyers. Uh, and then you get stopped out and you lose absolutely everything. It could be both long or short. Uh, I so, so my advice is never. And believe me, I trade a lot. Look, if you ever get to the point where uh, you have uh, goals that you want for your retirement, this is the amount of money you need to have. Maybe you have uh, uh, your debts paid off and that kind of a situation. So you know, everyone has a different uh, goal, what that number might be. Uh, you know, once your savings, your, your brokerage account can reach that point, your retirement is set, and now you just have a, a trading account, you know, something along the lines of 10 to 20 percent can be reasonable. But like, like, like we say here, make sure you have a make sure you have a trading plan uh, when you have a margin account. Uh, also, on top of that, make sure uh, you're investing in things uh, that you understand. Uh, that's an important thing. So uh, have some kind of an upper limit as to how big uh, you would want that. You would want that to be relative to the size of your, both your net worth and your and your account. So uh, I, I personally would tend to stay away from it. I, I don't like debt. 
uh, in the first place. Uh, I think there's a certain freedom that comes without, without having it. Uh, so it, it is what it is. I know people are going to do it anyways. That's why we're doing the video, so that you understand what it is, what the implications are, both positive and negative, of course. Uh, so as long as you understand it, that's the first step. Uh, how you choose to, uh, to work around it uh, and utilize it is entirely up to you. Everyone has to make their own decisions, uh, but there are a lot of risks involved. And we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up at that, guys. Lots of great uh, points there. Lots of uh, very key uh, points when it comes to uh, both understanding what margin is and then secondary uh, or secondly, how we should be using margin or uh, in our case, uh, if we can at all avoid it, maybe uh, try avoiding it. But there you go. Hope you learned something about uh, margin accounts. Guys, let's go to Valeria. Hey Brandon, thank you for this great explanation. Guys, please subscribe to this channel and join our live trading show every day at 9 a.m. Eastern Time.